Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Zhe Liang Fan. I come from uh, Purdue University, and uh, I'm a PhD student of uh, Professor Koshi Roy. And uh, today I'm going to present the ultra-low-power neuro neuromorphic computing with uh, uh, spin talk devices. And uh, okay, uh, before I talk about the neuromorphic computing, which is uh, basically on non-boolean computation, I will first talk about, give you a very rough introduction of the boolean computation with spin, uh, spin talk devices. And uh, the all spin logic just uh, can employ several uh, magnets interacting through these non-magnetic channels. And uh, the compactness, non-volatility, and uh, the ultra-low voltage is, is most uh, attractive uh, property of all spin logic. But the high power dissipation and uh, the low switch speed of the all spin logic is its major bottleneck. And uh, in our group, we explored several technicals to mitigate this bottleneck, that which is we uh, use the pipelining of the all spin logic, which you can see here is a two phase pipelining, and also the 3D stacking of the ASL, uh, which is uh, all spin logic layers and uh, also use the leaky, tra leaky transistors of the clocking gate. So by combining these three techno technicals, and uh, we did a simulation compared with a 15 nanometer simul design, you know, FIR uh, design, which is a finite impulse uh, response, which it basically con con consists of a lot of multiplication. So we can get almost a comparable uh, power dissipation with the uh, CMOS technology, but uh, the area density of the ASL is around 1,000x higher than the CMOS technology. So we'll say, okay, that's the best we can get for the uh, Boolean computation with spin devices. But uh, we think the spin devices may be better than the non-Boolean computation. Now we're going to the non-Boolean computation. And uh, basically, the traditional computation models uh, are highly efficient in performing some uh, uh, brain severe computations such as uh, the image recognition, face recognition, or reasoning. And uh, the artificial neural network, the basic unit of the artificial neural network is just uh, build a neuron that connects the external stimulus through the program, the synapses. And the, the fundamental uh, operation of the artificial neuron is just uh, a threshold operation of the weighted sum of the inputs, which you can see here. This is a most simple mathematical model of artificial neural network. Of a neural network. So our, our job is, to, okay, we can use the spin devices to model this artificial neural network. Now, actually, the artificial neural network can be implemented in the CMOS circuits, of course, but this is a very simple example of a uh, analog CMOS circuits for the artificial neuron, which in the first stage it contains an operational amplifier. It takes care with all of the inputs, and in the second stage it has a, a comparator which will compare with the threshold of the neuron. So we find it's very complex and very power hungry if we apply it to a large scale uh, neural network. And so we proposed this ultra low voltage and a high speed current mode, which is using spin talk devices that can mimic the functionality of the uh, brain neurons. So basically, it's a, a domain wall based neuron. A domain wall is a, a domain wall magnet. It consists of uh, several uh, magnets and separated by a non magnet wall. We call it a domain wall. And uh, this domain wall, which you can see here, it can be moved by application of a current, a charge current along this nanostrip. So if you just see this position of this domain wall magnet, if the domain wall is moved, the spin polarity of this free domain, it will flip. And we can use this MTG to sense the state of this free domain. So this is the structure of uh, the domain wall magnet neuron. And uh, this D2, is grounded, and uh, this D1 is the input of, the, of this neuron. The spin polarity of D1 and D2, they are anti-parallel. So, and D3 is the free domain. So, the spin polarity of this D3, it can be written parallel and, or anti-parallel with this D1, depending on the input current direction. The, the input current direction can be this way or this way, and also the magnitude of this current. 
So basically, we can use this structure to do the threshold function. So we we'll say, okay, this is the domain wall uh, neural model. And uh, oh, by Oh, by the way, this is uh, a unipolar neuron because this is ground, and you can only have one uh, one input. Now we have another model of the uh, spin neuron, which employs the lateral spin valve. And uh, in this neuron, which is a bipolar spin neuron, actually you can have uh, M3 and M2. They are uh, two antiparallel uh, magnets, and uh, M3 can corresponding to the inhibitory inputs of the neuron and M2 corresponding to the excavatory the inputs of the neuron. And uh, M1 will, is the output, is the outputs of this spin neuron. And uh, we will have the current going to this way. The outputs, uh, new outputs MTG here will be flipped to be parallel or anti-parallel to M3 or M2 based on the total sum of the uh, M1. So basically, this is a model of a bipolar spin neuron. And uh, the communication through the different neurons is in the biological neural network, that is the, the synapses or the axon. This can be done using this, it can be memory resistors or the DTCS, which is the deep trial, the current source. And it can operate in a very low voltage, it's around 20 millivolt. So it's a very low voltage. Another a uh, device can be used as domain wall mag uh, as synapses, which is domain wall magnets. And as I said before, for the domain wall magnets, it has two uh, spin polarity, and uh, it's separated by a domain wall here. And uh, if the current is going to this way, that means the electrons are going this way, and uh, the the spin polarized electron will push this domain up. So th this can be uh, programmed used as a synapses. And now we can see how this synapses can do the computation. Like uh, when, when this, this is a domain wall, and at the beginning, it's, the offset is zero. And uh, we can apply the current in this way, and it can, it can push the domain wall either to the left or to the right. So whenever, when we do the computation, the current will be put in the vertical way. So the generated the spin current will be depending on the offset of this domain wall. So in this model, we can use this domain wall magnets as a synapses, and this is the output neuron. So, it's, so we can we can do a one-to-one -one mapping of the biological neural network here. Like uh, this is the uh, uh, this is the neuron. We we use this uh, bipolar spin neuron, and uh, this is the synapses of. And uh, the axon can be just uh, used, a DT, as I said before, using a DTCS transistor, which is a very low power uh, current, current mode transmission. So uh, here are some uh, examples for the domain one neuron here. We use this crossbar network and uh, the intersection of the crossbar, which can be a memory store or any uh, PCM here. And uh, this application is associated memory, and uh, all of the uh, images are stored uh, along the ver of each column here. And uh, if we have the input images as this, so the the, the pixel wise uh, will be converted into this voltage. That means this voltage is proportional to the pixel wise of this uh, input images. So the input images will broadcast to these horizontal lines. That means at the end of each column, that is the dot products of the voltage and the uh, resistance here. So, which is uh, can be seen as or correlation between the test images and the stored images here. Okay. Uh, so we can use this domain wall neuron uh, applied the or some kind of uh, ADC circuits and the WT circuits. We can detect which one is the highest the current here. That means the highest current means the highest correlation. We'll say, okay, this is the, the person stored in this memory. Here's another uh, application of the, uh, of the neuron, and uh, this is a cellular neural network which can take the inputs from its neighbors and also it's uh, from the upper photodiode, which is uh, for the uh, analog signal occurrence and the processing. For each unit, it can contain the ADC, which is the analog digital converter, or analog processing unit and the digital uh, signal processing unit. And uh, applied to the 
edge extraction and some other image processing uh, applications, we can get around 100x better than the state-of-art CMOS technology. So now going to our summary, we explored the possibility of non-boolean computation using spin talk devices, and we found uh, if we use this spin talk device based on the artificial neural network, it's very energy efficient. It can almost get a 100x uh, better energy efficient than the state-of-art CMOS technology. And uh, in the future, we probably, actually we have already explored the application of STT device in global interconnect designs. Okay, thank you all. Yeah. Questions? Questions, Eli? So the, the previous speaker uh, talked about uh, something uh, rather similar, uh, and uh, I asked him, uh, you have to turn it on. I asked the previous speaker uh, about the the um, the, ar the architectures. Basically, uh, it was an STT RAM memory cell, dry, mm. and uh, that drove current uh, or created a magnetic field, which would be sensed magnetoresistively. That would drive current to switch the next STT cell. Mm. And uh, so, uh, although it's magnetic, the signals are being transmitted over electrical wires. Yes. Does that apply for your system as well? Of course. It's a current mode. So the voltage is very small. It's around a 20 millivolt or something. And the current is around a 10 or 20 micro ampere. Like so that. it's very desirable for energy uh, savings in the sense that the voltage Correct. is very low. Correct. Because here the domain wall magnets actually is just the metal layer. So you can just uh, using uh, very low power, a uh, very low voltage. Yeah. That's the main advantage. And also, I have a poster for the Allspin logic. So, I, if you have any questions on the Allspin logic, you can drop by my poster. Uh, um, so, you're using um, analog to read the summing of those uh, junctions, and typically, the analog circuitry is like two generations behind digital. So, um, in fact, some people are saying that it's hard for it to get below about 100 nanometers. Um, do you see that that will be a problem? Because if digital is still going down and this is stuck at 100 nanometer yeah. nodes, you might you might lose. <laughs> yeah, actually, in our in the associated memory part and uh, for the circuits and uh, for the crossbar, it's only the memories or crossbar. It's nothing but the uh, crossbar. And uh, for the detection units, we are using our domain wall neuron. Actually, it's just a star ADC based on the domain wall neuron. Because uh, for here, we just say the domain wall neuron is a very uh, current mode comparator. So it can be applied to an ADC. Generally, you get the analog signal, which is the current. And uh, I, we can change it to the digital and store it in the register. And I use a very uh, low power digital circuit to, de to detect which one is the largest. We don't use the analog winner take all circuits but it's a digital circuit. So that's why it's very uh, uh, power, uh, power saving. But I was worried about area. Does mm. it, I mean, it seems like you still need a lot of area, but I don't know. I, I can talk. 